Welcome to Magnify Him Church, located at 4509 Island Avenue in the Double Tree Hotel Liberty Room. Our Sunday services start with intercessory prayer at 1030, life-changing church at 1045. Mm-hmm. Then our main service starts at 12 o'clock noon oh, yeah. to 1.30 p.m. That ends out our services for today. All right. May the grace of God be with you always. Amen. Matthew, we're in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. I thank you for being such a gracious host. Minister Chesley Brandon, we thank you for all the announcements. We thank you for that wonderful song that was sang that just rang in our hearts this morning. And now it's time for the word. So let us go to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. The sermon in your hearing is identified and qualified. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to give you today. Because time has kind of gotten away from us. And I do have another appointment today. So I have to get right into the word. Amen. Uh, You'll find me, everyone, please come together. Everybody, please stand for the reading of God's word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 reads like this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a holy took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up with their hands so that if you will not strike your foot against the stone. Verse 7, Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to test. Verse 8, again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said. If you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him. Away from me Satan. For it is written. Worship the Lord your God. And serve him only. Then the devil left him. And the angels came. And attended him. Let us hold our Bibles in the air. I can have. What the word says. I can have. And I can do. What the word of God says. I can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Dear Lord, Heavenly Fathers, I bow my head before you today, humble before you. I ask you in the name of Jesus. You'll speak a word in season to touch a heart of mind. God, help us to run to you, Lord. I pray that this sacred holy writ will find its way in each and every member's heart today. And God, help us to realize that you are identified and qualified. And Father, we give you thanks, honor, and glory for all you've done on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. I've always admired the kind of person who's not just all talk. I mean, don't just talk about it, but be about it. You can talk about a job all day long, but if you don't lift a finger to help me, you're really no help at all. In chapter 3, verse 
13 to 17, we see Jesus walking into the water right there with John. John is baptizing in the River Jordan and hundreds of people are standing around, all around, hundreds of people all waiting to step down into the water. Jesus breaks the line to be baptized. And John is just so overwhelmed by this that you have to realize something that he just got finished talking about this one to come that were baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. And he said that he's not able even to tie his shoelace. And he's saying to himself, you about to mess everything up. No, 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 Jesus, because you don't have anything to be baptized for. He said, you never sinned. Amen. You've never done anything wrong. And my baptism is a baptism of the repentance. And people are going to wonder what in the world is going on here. If this man is, don't have any sin, why, why, why would he want to be baptized in the middle of hundreds of people that are being baptized for sin if he don't have no sin? Jesus, you're about to mess up the PR work here. You're about to mess up the image here. You're about to blow it. People are going to wonder, why am I going to be baptized? If he's baptized. But you have to realize something. He's getting baptized so scripture can be fulfilled. Why? 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 Listen. Because 700 years ago in Isaiah 53 and verse 12, it said that he would be numbered with the transgressors. And he was, uh, listen, he was a transgressor. They're saying, no, no, no. He died for our sins. He came to identify with you and me. See, he gets down there in the water because he's letting you know that he is coming to die for you. And how could somebody do something for me that don't know me? Ain't been through the things that I've been through. Can't identify with me. And Jesus said, I came to identify with you. I'm going to be baptized just like all of you need to be baptized. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. amen. He identified with us. And at the end of his earthly ministry, he would go to a cross to die for us. Somebody say us. 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 On the old rugged cross, how can, how can someone respect you that doesn't come to live with you or go through the motions of life like you? We all see a righteous son of God going in for a sinner like you and me. Talking about a massive miracle. He's taking the sins of the world upon him. And he opens up and says, listen, I'm all about you. When I go into the trenches, he climbs in when I'm defenseless. Somebody say amen. amen. He's down with us. He loves us enough to get in the trials of life with us. He loves us enough like Shadrach, Meshach, Bendigo was in the fire. He gets right in there in the fire with them. He just doesn't stand on the outside. He gets in it with us. And no matter what you're going through today, I want you to realize something. You're not alone. Somebody say, I'm not alone today. God is in there with me. Then we hear God in verses 16 and 17. Of chapter 3 he said this is my son this is the real deal this is my son whom I'm well pleased he said just believe in him he's not just doing it for you he's doing it to bring you back to God whether we realize it or not, we needed a representative. Because there was no one else on earth that was without sin. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God demands a sacrifice. 
and Jesus came to be the living sacrifice for each and every one of us. That's the reason why we say he identified with us. But now let's get to the qualified. You look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. It says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. To say he was hungry is an understatement. Because whether you realize it or not, listen, the medical doctors and the medical uh, society of today will tell you that if you fast past 40 days, you'll get ready to start doing irreversible damage to the body. That means your mind, your body, your organs are going to be tempted to lose their strength. 40 days is the test of man. But Jesus said, listen, I'm going to go all the way. Not a one day fast, two day fast, two week fast. He said, I'm going 40 days. I'm going all the way to the end of where man will begin to lose everything. Jesus said, I'm going to do the full 40 days and 40 nights. Somebody said, he goes all the way. All the way for you. All the way for me. Somebody need to clap their hands and give God the glory. Because he goes all the way for you. And then after he went through all of that, he goes into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, ain't that something? He was already baptized, y'all. He didn't have to go any further. And because he had no sin in him, it was done just to identify with you and me. That's the reason why he got baptized. He didn't need to get right with God. He's already God. He is the living God. He is the God in the flesh. Can I get a witness? He didn't have to do nothing. And then the first thing he does, it goes into the wilderness to be tempted. Why? Why? Because we already had two people that we know in our Bible that represented us. It was Adam and Eve. Come on, somebody. And they represented us. And guess what? They messed it up. They messed it up. When the devil tempted Adam and Eve, they threw in the towel. They didn't have to because guess what? They were, oh God, listen to me. They didn't have this flesh that we have like we have it. They was listen, they didn't know anything about sin. So they willfully sinned because they wanted to sin. Adam and Eve didn't have a sin nature. So since they didn't have a sin nature, listen, they made the choice. But we got sin always pulling on us because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. They supposed to be the example, set the road for us to travel. They were in paradise. They didn't have nothing pressuring them. They had one thing that they had to stay away from, one thing that they had to resist, one thing that they had to say no to. We got millions of things each and every day of our life that we got to say no to. Can I get a witness in here? Is anybody listen to me? Get this here, Brian. Listen, we got temptation on every corner. Amen. Every time I wake up in the morning, you got something in your face. Some challenge. Adam and Eve didn't have no challenge. They were perfect. In a perfect garden. They wasn't subject to temptation like you and I. God gave them everything they needed. Everything they wanted. And they failed. Completely failed. It was nothing inside them to make them feel that, that, that they, they needed to su subject themselves to the devil. It was nothing inside of Adam and Eve to force them or even draw them. Are you listening to me? They didn't have the nature that you and I have. Amen. They were pure. Yes, they didn't have no reason in the world to go the way that they went. Somebody say Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. 
did not have a sinful nature. We always putting everything on the devil. But saints, it's not always the devil. Can I get a witness? Are you listening to me? Listen, most of us, we love sin. But Adam and Eve didn't have that sin nature in them. Something in us wants to sin, but they didn't have that nature. They willingly chose to listen to the devil. They willfully chose not to obey God. Willfully. 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 They said, God, we're not going to listen. We're not going to do it your way. But Jesus... As soon as he was baptized, he goes in the wilderness to prove that he is qualified. He said, I am not like Adam. I am not like Eve. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to face the devil straight up and I'm going to show him, listen, that Jesus is Lord. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. He said, I'm not going to be tempted. He let you know straight up off the top, I'm qualified. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to play with it. Take me out there. And I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You are standing on solid ground because you got Jesus. Are you listening to me? You don't have to waver. You don't have to go bow down to nothing. You don't have to back out. Listen, you're not on the losing side. You're on the winning side. Because Jesus is the one that gave every last one of y'all victory in here. The only victory we got, we got it in Jesus. Because he already paid the price. Lord, I feel like praising him. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to shout. Because I'm on the winning side. Can I get a witness? Somebody say amen. If you're on the winning side, let me see you clap your hands. Hallelujah. And give God the praise. Because we're always winning. Yes, sir. He alone is qualified. Somebody say he alone, he alone. is qualified. He alone is victorious. He is uniquely qualified to represent you and me on the cross, y'all. They failed, but he won't. <laughs> Adam and Eve were in a beautiful garden with everything they ever wanted, everything they ever needed. But let me tell you something. They was eating fruits and enjoying themselves. Their bellies was full, but Jesus was starving. Listen to me. Jesus was starving. 40 days and 40 nights, Mother Hobbs. He was hungry. Hungry. Starving. Yet and still, in all the adverse situations, he still stood up and got qualified. Let you know. I'm not sitting up eating fruits and, and vegetables and enjoying the paradise of the garden. He said, I stepped into a filthy, nasty situation. Hungry, but I'm still gonna stand for God. Honey, when you ain't got nothing, no, dear, that you can still stand for God. God is always in the mix with you. Let me tell you something you're a winner, not a loser. You're the head, not the tail. You're above and not beneath. Always know whatever challenge you're in. Let me tell you something. When you get your defenseless, He steps in the trenches. That's what He does. And he's saying at the end of my ministry, I will die on the cross. Take the punishment for your sins and die in your place because I am the one that is uniquely qualified. Somebody say amen. Say he identified and he's qualified. He's identified and he's qualified to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think because Jesus is Lord. Somebody say he's Lord in here. He said, I'll take the punishment for you because I'm qualified. I'll be your Lord and Savior. Why? Because I'm qualified. Three temptations that he went through. Let's break down the temptations. Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. How is he the one who identifies with us? 
because he's our representative. But he's also something else. He's our role model. Can I get a witness? Our role model. Can you say role model? role model? He came to show us how to deal with the enemy and keep it together. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Y'all hang with Pastor just for a minute. Look at verse 3 and 4. Let me show you how he handles it. The tempter came to him and said, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What is he trying to say? The first temptation, the enemy comes. Listen, I want you to realize something. The enemy is always going to come at you when you're weak. Get that in your head. Man, he's coming when you're at your weakest. 40 days, 40 nights, he's weak. And guess what? The enemy comes. The enemy always hits you when you're at your lowest. Oh, you better pay attention. Now watch this. Jesus at his lowest, and that's when he comes. He said, listen, turn these stones into bread. He is appealing to what he needs the most. Let me tell you something. When you're hungry, you ever been so hungry, stuff starts looking like food. Come on here now. <laughs> Oh, come on, somebody. I can see him looking over there now, man, looking at them stones. Them stones do look like bread. He said, all you got to do is just say the word. All you got to do is just turn them into, listen, he said, ain't you hungry? That's how he messed with you. Ain't you really hungry, Jesus? <laughs> You've been 40 days, 40 nights. You're the son of God. Come on, man. All you got to do is just say bread is bread. That's it. How simple is that? See, the devil always knows how to appeal to you. He talks in ways that are so suggestive. If you ain't in tune to God, the devil will trip you up in a heartbeat. He say, you know how hungry you is. You kidding me? You God. You do anything right, right? You can see the hey, you the man, ain't you? Come on now. Remember? Red Sea, remember? Quail running wild, manna from heaven. Hey, it's a no big deal for you. Watch this here. I want to tell you something. The devil will always suggest that you take it out of God's hands and put it in your hands. Listen what I'm telling you. The devil will always suggest that you take it out of you. Listen, God's hands. Do it with your own hand. Do something for yourself. He says you deserve it. You have to trust in the provisions of God. Even when life is falling apart, still make sure you do it God's way. The devil will say, oh yeah, she ain't treating you right. There's a good woman right there. She wants you. She like you. She on your job. She winking at you. She look good. She got everything that nobody else got. You know, look at her. She this, she that. Look at your wife. She this, she that. She don't treat you right. She got issues. But here's one. Got everything you want. Everything you need. You deserve this. You work hard, brother. Take it out of God's hands. Put it in your hands. You make it work. You make it happen. You make things turn around on your own. It's always the temptation of the devil to let you do it on your own. Void of God. And when you step out and you do it without God, the devil says, I got you now. Come on, somebody. Say amen in here. You got to learn how to pray. You got to learn how to wait. And you got to learn how to trust. And you got to realize something. Listen at me closely. With Jesus, they talking about bread. But let me tell you something, Mary. It ain't bread with us. It could be your marriage. It could be your family. Come on here, somebody. It could be your money. It ain't bread with me and you. It's what we love the most. Come on here, somebody. Woo! Are you going to panic? You're going to focus on your needs, your problem, or are you going to trust God? Are you going to trust God? I don't hear y'all. Yeah. Satan always 
got to put a got a plan that excludes God in your life. Jesus answered his written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said I'm not going to do this on my own digging. Not going to jump out here and do it. He said I will not look solely at my problem. My answer is and always listen will be God first. It's easy to take Satan's suggestion. It's easy to take the easy road. It's easy to throw in the towel. It's easy to say it's over. It's easy to say, I'm not going to do it. But let me tell you something that I learned in life. The easy road ain't always the best road. Somebody clap your hand. See, when you take the easy way out, you're setting yourself up because the devil got a trap for you. If it's too easy, you better be careful. You better pray about it. You better talk to God about it because you can get yourself in a trap you can't get out of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just get a divorce. Just leave her. Just throw in the towel. Just throw your wife away. You don't need her. Here you is sitting up all these years, been in your corner, didn't have nothing. You was poor to tote it downtrodden, burnt heavy late, didn't have nothing. She come in your life, help you to get where you're at today. And now you get to the point where everything is going good for you. Now she ain't good enough for you. The devil is a lie. The devil always wants you to throw away what's best for you. I wish I had somebody here to clap your hands and give God the glory. That's your child. I'm not going to throw my child away. My child, all he got is his mom and his daddy. And I'm going to stick by him because he always wants you to go some way. They grown. They ought to live their own life. But they still need your prayer. Amen. Go ahead, Go ahead. Let me teach this thing in here today. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Listen to this. When you take a stand, stand on the word. What did he tell him? He told him the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, 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 word that comes out of the Lord's mouth. We all get tempted. And don't lie. Amen. Don't lie. God pulling the colors off of every one of y'all here. I'm telling all of y'all right now, we all get tempted all the time. We go to these churches, act like everybody's a super saint. The devil is a lie. Every last one of y'all get tempted. So do I. We all get tempted. I'm just not ashamed to tell you. Amen? But you don't resolve. You don't resolve it for yourself. You let God resolve it for you. Somebody clap your hands right there. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you're single, it can't be you who chooses the dates. Can't be you. You got to pray about that thing. You want to take Faye out? Faye, pray about that thing. Say, is this the man I need? Come on, somebody. Is this the one that need to be? Church, you got to pray about that thing. God, is this the one that I should be dating? Because, see, once you put your foot in something, it's hard to pull it out. Now, I'm telling you right now. Pray before you put your foot in there. Don't be hollering at her. Don't be winking at her. Be praying about her, Tony. Pray about her, Tony. Pray about her, Tony. Let God decide, Sadie, who's going to be your next date. Look at verse 5. I'm talking to y'all. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Say, I like him. He cute. Yeah, all right. Then the devil took him to a holy city, the next temptation, temptation two, and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Look at this here. See, Satan uses scripture back on him. Look at verse six. He said, if you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written. Now, ain't that something? See how the devil do? You see that? Now, he used scripture on the devil. Do you see the devil using scripture back on him? Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, Nia, that devil will use scripture on you, and you'll think it's God, and there's nobody but the fucking tail devil. 
That's exactly what it is. Because remember something, he knows scripture too. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Yes, he do. Oh, yeah. Somebody say you in there now, Pastor. Hallelujah. Because the devil be talking to you. And he uses scripture on him. What's this jump all about? Let me tell you what the jump is all about. It's all over there in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. It said that the Lord will come from the temple. It said the Lord will come from the temple. Listen, you got to realize something. The temptation here is to be instantly popular. Instantly popular. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but I want you to realize something, Sister Andrew. The temptation here, man, you don't miss this, is to be instantly popular. Saints, let me tell you something. The devil ain't changed his tricks. This is why a whole lot of people in these industries, these music industries, rap industry, it's the temptation, the temptation to be instantly popular. That's what's going on with the internet. Instantly popular. I mean, you only just a popping that thing. Huh? You just a doing your thing. You're just putting on your show all out on the internet. Everybody got to see who you are, what you're working with, because the devil temptation is for people to be instantly popular. That's what TikTok is. That's what Bookface is. The temptation to be instantly popular. And let me tell you something, saints. It's a lot of people have sold their soul to the devil in the game to be instantly popular. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, you better let me teach this thing. Excuse me, son. Are you listening to me? You want to instantly be known. Instantly. I want to tell you something, saints. He said, just float down from the top of the temple. God said he gave his angels charge. Just climb on up there, Jesus, and just jump off. Just float down. Let the world see you. Instantly popular. He said, and if you do that, I'll give you all the world. The devil will promise you everything and deliver on nothing. Just sign right here. Just come on. Everything you need, we're going to make you a star. Do you know how many young ladies right now is sold into prostitution because they wanted to be a star? They want to be seen out on the internet. And oh my God, you'll do this, you'll do that. And the next thing you know, they're on the street in Detroit being pimped by a man in a green Cadillac. Sold into slavery, prostitution, young children, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. Mama can't find you. Instant. Then they popular. Then when you're strung out on some date rape drug, somebody slipped a Mickey. Your ID say you're 18, but you ain't but 13. Now you're somewhere you can't get loose. Instant popularity. I don't care nothing about being popular. You better care about being saved. Somebody clap your ass and give God the glory. Listen, some of y'all need to get off of TikTok. It's polluting your mind. Need to get off of Facebook. It's polluting your mind. You can be sitting there watching something, something pop up. You didn't ask for that. But guess what? The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life zoom right in. Because you're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. You look too long. Now all of a sudden, your wife don't look right. Now all of a sudden, you can't keep your eyes in your head everywhere you go. You're looking at everybody else's wife but your own. And you wonder what your problem is. I'm telling you what it is. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 
instantly popular. Well, let me tell you something. Listen, you can <laughs> give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Somebody clap your hands and give God the glory and say, oh man, amen. And don't think in your disobedience, think that God is automatically going to wink at your sin. God ain't going to take care of you just because you say you say, but you're doing everything that ain't saved. You think for a minute that I can run out here and run in the middle of Route 76. I can go out here, run in the middle of 95. I can go out here, run across 95, 476, and don't get hit just because I'm saved? You don't tempt God. You don't tempt God like that. You can be graveyard dead. Can I get a witness? Somebody clap me. I tell you, y'all, y'all, I'm telling you now. Thank God that God is on our side. Somebody say amen. amen. Lord have mercy. Finally, I come to the last. Watch this. Verse 7. Jesus answered, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to a test. Don't think that you can keep getting high and it ain't going to affect you. Don't think you're going to just take one hit. <laughs> you're going to be all right. You got any idea how many people is lost in space from one hit? Because for the rest of their life, they're trying to get that same feeling, trying to get that same hit back. And there's your husband, there's your brother, there's your cousin that stole everything out the house, that sold the wine out the house, that sold the plumbing out the house, and they're in the house, and it's dark and cold and dirty, and all they want is a hit like the first hit. But it never comes. It never comes. It never comes. Chasing pipe dreams. And you can sit here and act like I'm not talking about you. And you ain't got no family member. But let me tell you something. I done had family members on the pipe. I done had family members on crack. I done had family members on heroin. Ain't we, George? I know what it's like. It's not easy. Not easy. No, sir. And you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You done done all you can do. But let me tell you something. Put down your plate and fast for your family. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the honor. I'm telling you what you need to do. Hallelujah. Verse 8 to 10. I'm going to leave y'all alone. And again the devil took him to a very high mountain. And showed him all the kingdoms of this world and their splendor. He said all... This I'll give to you, he said, if you would just bow down, worship me. The devil couldn't offer it to him if the devil didn't have it. Adam gave it all over to him. When Adam and Eve sinned, they turned all of their authority over to the devil. Let me tell you something, the devil is a prince of the power of the air. He is the prince of the power over this world that we're living in right now, I'm telling you. But he's not the God of the saints. I wish I had a witness in here to give God the glory. He may be the God of the world, but he ain't the God of me. He ain't the God of you. I got God as my God. Jesus is my Lord, not the devil. Not the devil. Not the devil. I don't belong to him. I wish I had somebody just give God a praise. Give God a shout. And what I want you to realize is Jesus did not debate with him. That's your problem. That's your problem. You don't debate with the devil. You don't debate with him. Can I tell you something? You cannot win an argument over Satan. Many have tried and many have died. You can't convince him not to be the devil. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You can't convince him to be a friend. Let me tell you something about Halloween and these wicked holidays. 
See, these people go around and dress up and they put on all of these masks and they got the haunted woods and the haunted this and the haunted that and they dress up, put this stuff in their house and, and they got the kids dressed up like Halloween, all of these different things. But let me tell you something, what you're doing, all you're telling the devil is, hey, I'm still open. I ain't all the way there yet. Woman sitting in the bank had one dress like a witch, one dress like I don't know what the heck she was, but I just said, I, get, I don't know. Well, well, I don't know you got on a tiger stripe jumpsuit with, a, with, 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 with gold fake chains with dollar signs and shades on. I thought she was trying to be Josie and the Pussycats or something. I didn't know what the world she was wrong with. And I, yeah, I didn't, you know, I started going over to the other girl. And I don't know what the heck going on with you, girl. You're confused. Can I get a witness? Hey, man, you ever see some people just confused? And I went over and asked the other girl. I said, I know why you ain't got nothing, uh, all these costumes on. She said, why, Pastor E? I said, because you saved. She just laughed. See? When you save, you're different. Am I right, Mother Hobbs? You don't look like everybody. You don't do everything. I would fall out on the floor if I went up to Mother Hob and Diggin' Hob house and seen the whole front yard full of ghosts and goblins. <laughs> Sadie, I'm telling you, I would wonder what in the world is going on with Andrea. What in the world is this in her front yard? I would be told, my jaw would hit the ground. Mother Mary, I'm telling you right now, Mother Mary. I'd be totally shocked. Because I know darn well y'all hate the devil. Anybody here hate the devil? Clap your hands if you hate the devil. We ain't got nothing in common. I'm not dressing up. I'm not even going boo. I'm not going to do it. I'm not even going to be cast with a friendly ghost. Can I get a witness? I don't like no ghost. I don't like no goblin. Can I be out with y'all? I don't even like to watch scary movies. Are you listening to me? I'll be sitting up nightmares. The devil is a lie. I don't like Freddy Krueger. I don't like Jason. I don't like none of them. And I don't sure don't like Chucky. Amen. Somebody give God the glory up in the air. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Y'all ain't got nothing to do with me. Amen. And what I love about the scripture says, when the devil left, the angels came. Let me tell you something. When the devil leaves, the angels is coming. He always wants you. To go and get what you want. That's the way the devil works. Just don't do it with God. He wants you to go the easy way. God always sometimes make the way hard. Come on, y'all. It's a narrow road if you find it. Can I get a witness? But not you. Because you're aware. And now that you're aware, you realize something that you got the power to win. It's three things I want to say to you. I'm going to close out this sermon. We're going to have communion. The first thing I want to say to you, stop letting people think for you. Stop letting people think for you. Did you hear me? Stop letting people think. Think for you. Are you listening? Because let me tell you something. Manny said, I don't play that. And he ain't lying. Let nobody think for you. You think for yourself. You let God dictate your direction in your life. If God don't tell you to do it, don't think you're going to make Emmett Raglan do what you want him to do. I done had a lot of people try to make me do what they want me to do. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it the, the way that God tell me to do it. Somebody clap your hands if you hear that. Because we all get tired sometimes. Amen? Amen. We all get weary sometimes. 
And I've let people pull me to the left, to the right in my life. But let me tell you something. Every time I do it, I wind up flat on my face wishing I'd have never listened to somebody else. Yes, sir. And people done pulled us all. Every kind of way. But God has a better way. Somebody clap your hands right there. Give it to Jesus who never, ever loses. Talk you in the situations. I done lost my money. Then lost valuables. Lost time. Wasting my time with somebody else's suggestion and what they wanted me to be, what they wanted me to do. And they wanted me to go this way and that way and lost everything. And I made up my mind from now on, if it don't come from God, I don't want it. Clap your hands and get on your feet and give God the praise because God has put your life on a whole different path and direction. You tell the devil, no, 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 I don't want it. Because the only one that's qualified is the one who identified and the one who died for me. Amen. Clap your hands and give God the glory. God bless y'all out there on YouTube. You need to connect with the ministry. It's 4509 Island Avenue. The number you can call is 919-638-7352. Leave a message. Amen. You'll see us at 4509 Island Avenue in the Liberty Room. Magnify him. It's time for you to make a change. And a change will do you good when you come to Jesus.